Hi guys, welcome to the sixth video of the Golang Restaurant Management Backend Project Series. Uh, in the last video, we created models for the first three things, food and voice and menu. Right now, I'll create um, the table model and then we'll create the order model and then order item and then the user model. Alright, so let's start working with the table model. So, as you already know that all of the models in our uh, folder called models all of the files are part of the models package and using that we will be able to access them i'll need the time package i'll be importing the time package because i want to um, create timestamps for created at and updated at those timestamps for each for uh, for the orders and since we're using mongodb i'll use mongo driver bson primitive Now table is of type struct, you already know what structures are, they are uh, special data types that you can create on your own, almost like an object and data in, um, in JavaScript. So here you'll have table number, number of guests. In a restaurant, what all do you have in a table? Uh, on a table, you have the number of guests, you have the table number, you have created at updated at as in this record it's not when the table was created as the is this record when it was created and then you have the table id all right so for id you already know that we use primitive dot object id and it's in bson and it'll be underscore id This will be star int. This is basically number of guests. Table number is also an int. <coughs> Created at an updated at, as you know, using a time package to create a timestamp. Sorry. Table ID is a string. So here it's giving us a squiggly line because I have not written the spelling of primitive properly. Now it'll go away. Here it's going to be JSON and the field is going to be called number of guests. I'll have validation and I'll say that this field is required. Here also you'll have JSON and table number. Validate required json created at just make sure for created at and updated at in the json values the u and the c and u are not capital and are basically lowercase similarly for table id as well whereas the golang versions have c u and t as capital all right similarly for table number as well and number of guests also <coughs> The JSON versions of them don't have the first letter as capital, whereas uh, the Golang version of them has the first letter capital. Okay. So you can save it and your table is complete. Now we'll work on our order model. So we'll have package models import time, obviously, and go dot mongodb dot org slash mongo driver slash bison slash primitive perfect so we're talking about order which is a struct it has id it'll have an order date it'll have created at timestamp it'll have an updated at timestamp Okay, and it'll have an order ID. It'll have a table ID. So for your ID, you'll have primitive dot object ID. Your order date is a timestamp. Created at and updated at are also timestamps. Okay. 
and order id is string table id is star string the s is small so that's why it was giving us a squiggly line and this is going to be pson underscore id this will be json sorry just make sure that for order date the o and d are small case and order date is encapsulated between double inverted commas and so is required I have created at updated at so by mistake I've kept this a as capital it shouldn't be JSON order ID and JSON table ID validation is required okay so your order model is also now complete your table model is obviously complete So it should be db.org. This line goes away and everything works just fine. Now we'll work on our order item model. <clears throat> so our order item will have package, as you know, already models, import. I need my time package and my go.mongodb dot org slash mongo driver slash json slash primitive okay type order item struct the first is obviously id quantity and order item in, inside an order there are multiple order items right and all the order items are basically uh, having a quantity and or all order items are basically a food uh, a food uh, basically a food item right so they'll have a food id as well from here so let me write a unit price they have a quantity and a unit price they have created at updated at they'll have a food id like i said they'll have an order item id and they'll have an order id all right so basic structure is here and we'll have primitive dot object id and here we have json underscore id this will be quantity is a string unit price is float created add updated at you already know it's time dot time using the time package food id you already know it's a string order id is a string order item id is a string and order id is a string as well quantity you'll have json quantity and you'll validate it saying required and the quantity is going to be equal to small medium or large portion size all right the dish portion size is small medium or large and the unit price you'll validate as required and JSON you'll have created at 
updated at and food ID validate required and for order item you'll have order item ID so this food ID is a string because it's actually coming from our food model the entire food uh, item that is there will have an ID and that ID is we would be basically going to store here for that order item all right so for order item directly corresponds to a food order uh, a food item and uh, a lot of um, an order has a lot of different order items so that's why in an order item we'll also store the order id as in which order does it belong to this is of type string and here we'll say json order id and validation is required perfect so your order table and order item id or all these three uh, models are done now we'll work on our user model and now we'll work on our user model quickly so it's of we'll write package models import time and go dot mongo tb dot org slash mongo driver slash json slash primitive and user is of type struct and you know that user will have an id he'll have a first name a last name password email avatar phone token refresh token created at updated at and user id all right so id as you already know is let me see one two three four five yeah so this is primitive dot object id and and bson it looks like underscore id this is string last name is also string password and email are both string avatar phone and token sorry i've kept these at capital s by mistake this should be small s avatar phone token and refresh token are all strings created at updated at you already know it's time dot time and user id is string perfect here for first name you're going to have json first name and validation i'm keeping it as required minimum will be two maximum will be 100 but you can feel free to change these validations and make them not required if you want to and you can also change the minimum and maximum but just make sure you don't uh, put any spaces here because our validation function won't be able to read it password so for the password i've kept p as capital even at the database level and validate is that password is obviously required and i'll have a very simple validation here where i'll say minimum is equal to six but you can have a more advanced validation where you need special characters and all those different things right and uh, numbers and uh, some uh, different what do you call it um, 
lower case and upper case that kind of stuff you can keep all of those validations but i'm i won't be doing it because it just becomes a pain <laughs> in the sense you're not able to <laughs> log in into your own program <laughs> so you have validate here as well and the type of validation is email and it'll do it on its own and i've kept it as required for avatar there isn't much right so we'll just keep it as avatar there's no validation required for phone i'll keep phone validation to required and token is simply token and this will be refresh token created at and updated at and user ID will just be user underscore IT so by mistake I, I wanted to write this all in in my user model I've written all of that by mistake in my note models so now I've still uh, saved my user model and my note models is empty and now I want to create my note model note models basically simply notes there's nothing really complex about it so let me actually create it as well so let's say package models import time and go dot mongodb dot org slash mongo driver slash based on slash primitive all right type note struct and you have id you have text and title created at updated at and just simply note ID very simple and straightforward right just a text and title so this you already know it's primitive dot object ID and Bison is underscore id text is string title will be string as well created at you already know what it is right you know it's time dot time it's because that's why we're using the time package i don't know why this is coming here by mistake and updated at is going to be again time stamp note id is a string so for text you have json text and title is again text sorry in json it's uh, text and it's here it's title Here the JSON will be created at. Here the JSON will be updated at. And note ID is simply note ID. So all of your models are now complete. You have food model, invoice model, menu, note, order item, order, table, and user. All of them are complete. This is all that you had to do here. And that's um, that's a lot of work, you know. You have made your uh, entire project structure, controller functions are the outlines are ready, models, all of the models are done, all the routes are done, main.go file is done, database connection is done. So now we want to start working on helpers, middleware, and our controllers, right? That's the only part that's left. In this video, I've run out of time, so I'll continue this in the next, uh, like tomorrow's video. Thanks a lot for watching and do subscribe to the channel so that you come to know when the next video of this series comes out and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.